this morning. Singer-songwriter Thomas Oliver was awarded the prestigious APRA Silver Scroll Award for that hit right there, If I Move to Mars. He's toured all over the world and shared the stage with such legends as Joe Cocker and Eric Clapton. And he's also internationally recognised as one of the world's leading players of the Weizenborn as well. That's a lap steel guitar, by the way, if we didn't know. Great to have you here, Thomas <laughs> Oliver. Welcome. Yes, Thank you. welcome, Good Thomas. Thank you. Um, it's really nice to have you in the studio. First, can I just have a little look at your um, fingernails? Because I know that we've had so. Who else have we had in before? Who is You're a not the first person to know this. Use them to play. And you yes. use, so you've got, those are not your real nails, are they? They're acrylic on this hand, yeah. Just four nails. I, I go into the nail salons and just ask for four nails on one hand and all the women look at me funny. Yeah. And what, so they said, what, what colour do you want on the top? Any <laughs> colours, Thomas? You I haven't quite gone that far yet. Wow. Uh, and have you ever been sitting down somewhere and people have noticed your fingernails? All the time. On planes, yeah. people, people sit there and they, they go like that. And I, oh, yeah. I usually just go, I'm a guitar player. And they go, oh. Right. And then they Track get it. clean at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my other job. Tell us a little bit about this Weizenborn born guitar thing. Uh, well, it's it's an acoustic. It's sort of a Hawaiian guitar. They were made originally in the um, in the teens and twenties and thirties by a, um, a, a German dude living in Los Angeles, and um, and they were kind of used for yeah, like Hawaiian music and then blues, country, bluegrass, that kind of thing. And then um, yeah, I guess it, it's sort of a niche instrument. You don't see them around much, but um, I was just always drawn to it. And, and uh, clearly a natural performer at it. Did you pick it up quite easily? Yeah, well, I, at first I, I turned my guitar on a flat and um, ch tuned it differently and was clacking around on the frets with this piece of metal. And eventually I, I found, you know, I found an actual one and bought it. And um, it always came pretty naturally to me, but a lot of people talk about how hard it is to play, but it, I don't know, it, for me, it always seemed to make sense, I guess. It's something quite natural. And, and you're one of the world's leading players now. So they say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty magnificent. Because I've seen Ben Harper play it, isn't he? he yeah, it's the yeah. same thing, yeah. Okay, well, well actually, well, speaking of that sort of music, how would you describe your music? Uh, I usually say it's a little bit rootsy, a little bit solely, and it's, uh, I guess, one thing I like to try to create is just dynamics. You know, I, I like I like the live shows to, to go from like the very top to the very bottom of the dynamic spectrum. I like it when it's kind of delicate and fragile and then like, you know, crazy and heavy and intense and, and everywhere in between. It's a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, you won an APRA Silver Scroll for If I Moved to Mars. I mean, mm -hmm. what did that mean for you? Um, it, well, it was obviously it's a huge honour. Um, actually, my favourite part about winning it was that um, my former partner was my guest at the award ceremony and it was kind of the first opportunity I had ever had to kind of like publicly thank and acknowledge her for how much she contributed to that song and how much she contributed to so many of my songs. So, and I had my uh, my auntie and uncle there, and um, I actually got on a, a flight to LA the next day. And wow. so it took me a few days to really process the fact that I had won. But obviously, it's it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a huge accolade that I'm very proud of. Yeah, very prestigious award, and you should be proud of it. I put on your album the other day live at Crystal Palace, and I absolutely loved it. There was just awesome. something about it. So tell us how that process worked, because it was recorded live, wasn't it? It was recorded. Yeah, we had um, we had two sold out nights consecutive, consecutively uh, at the Crystal Palace, which is a um, like a mobile uh, venue that goes around New Zealand, um, and that was in Hawkes Bay, which is where I grew up, and um, we actually weren't intending to make a live album, we just recorded both nights and it was only um, it was only upon listening back that Mitch, my manager and I, we just thought like man this has to be a live album because there was something special about it, there was like an energy in the room and, and the, the, the band was on point and everything just kind of worked so there it was. Yeah, well, and that's what I got from the album is that I, I thought that when you do a live album and you would practice it and practice it because you got one shot to get it right, but this was kind of accidental, wasn't it? Yeah. Love that. That's totally, good. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and I think that's part of why there was a magic because none of us knew that, you know, I think if we were kind of consciously trying to create a live album, up. we would have played yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You would have really mucked yeah. it up. Um, so you've, you've shared the stage with the likes of Joe Cocker and Eric Clapton. I mean, how did that come about and what was it like? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. Meeting people like that is on one hand kind of crazy and then on the other hand just a normal part of life. They're just a guy, yeah. When you, when you kind of commit from a young age to being a musician, it's just like you just sort of know that that kind of thing is going to happen. So um, 
yeah, I, I remember shaking the slow hand. And obviously touring with Joe Cocker was a massive honour. Um, but yeah, it's sort of also in a funny way, just another day. Another They're just day. human beings, aren't they? Yeah. They Absolutely, all go to the yeah. Like we do. <laughs> yeah, <it's> true. <laughs> and one of the few people that I know that have met Ben Harper. Have you met him? I have, yeah. Have you had a jam with him? Uh, I haven't had a jam, nah, but um, exchanged guitars with him, yeah. No way. You're one oh, of the yeah. few people. He it seems to spend a lot of time in New Zealand. Well, actually, yeah, no, I was going to say, well, I've met him once, but not like you, you know. I just was like, hi, yeah. how are you, Ben? Shook his hand, got a photo, but you've obviously. Cool talked music with him which is something phenomenal do you look up to people like him who are your influences um oh, so many people I, I listen to i listen to um everything from alt country to drum and bass you know and, and um i guess my first influences were the music that my parents listened to and my, my dad was into neil young and, and um Everybody's bob dylan dad was and, into yeah, neil young. totally yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my mum was into sam cook and terence trent darby and that kind of thing and and then uh so that were my sort of most formative early years, I guess, and then I, yeah, yeah Dave Matthews Band, I, Bonnie Vere, James Blake, BB King, nice. uh, The Roots, uh, too many wow. to name. Well, drum and bass, alt country, they're very, very different sounds, but that's what's so good about uh, today's sound is that you can be as eclectic as you want to be, really, can't you? Yeah, go and see this guy live, that's what I'm going to uh, say. Been a pleasure, yeah. really looking forward to hearing your performance very soon as well. Live at the Crystal Palace is available now, and you can catch him playing in Wellington and on Sunday and Auckland next Friday. Check out the website for details and stick around too. As I mentioned, Thomas Oliver is going to be performing very soon.